Hi boys and girls, I'm the reading teacher. Today we're going to talk about connections that you can make when you're reading. Now remember, when you hear a story, I don't want you to just listen to the story. You're not just using your ears, but I want you to think. Good readers are always thinking about what they're reading, whether they're listening to the story, whether it's being read to them, or whether they're doing the reading. Good readers are always thinking. And the story, or the connection that we're going to make today is a text to self connection. That means we're going to make a connection between this story and our schema. Remember last time we talked a little bit about schema. Schema is what you already have up here. It's what you've already seen, what you've already experienced, places you've already been. You have little pictures and information stored in your brain. And we're going to see if we can make connections between what's in our schema and the story, The Relatives Came by Cynthia Ryland. I'm going to show you what I mean by that. And I'm going to be doing a lot of stopping during the story and modeling how I am using my connections, how I am taking the text and making connections with my own schema. Here we go. The Relatives Came by Cynthia Ryland. Looks like... They're coming from somewhere far away. They've got their suitcases. Lots of suitcases. It was in the summer of the year when the relatives came. They came up from Virginia. They left when their grapes were nearly purple enough to pick, but not quite. They had an old station wagon that smelled like a real car, and in it they put an ice chest full of soda pop, and some boxes of crackers, and some bologna sandwiches, and they came up from Virginia. They left at four in the morning when it was still dark, before even the birds were awake. Now this reminds me of the time that my family drove to visit some other relatives, and we had to drive to Canada. And we woke up before the birds were even awake and it was dark outside and my parents had packed the car already and we had so many snacks in our car and toys and books and that's a connection that I'm making that reminds me of what I'm reading here. They drove all day long and into the night and while they traveled along they looked at the strange houses and different mountains, and they thought about their almost purple grapes back home. They thought about Virginia, but they thought about us too, waiting for them. So they drank up all their pop and ate up all their crackers and traveled up all those miles until finally they pulled into our yard. And look, they're so excited. Whoops, they got a little too excited about meeting their relatives, didn't they? And the boys and girls went running down the, down the walk, down the path to meet them. I used to love when my grandparents would come visit us. And I'd look out the window and watch down the street for their car. And whenever they pulled up in my driveway, I would leave whatever it was I was doing and run down stairs and out the door and run to give them a hug. Then it was hugging time. Talk about hugging. Those relatives just passed us all around the car, pulling us against their wrinkled Virginia clothes, crying sometimes. They hugged us for hours. Then it was into the house and so much laughing and shining faces and hugging in the doorways. You'd have to go through at least four different hugs to get from the kitchen to the front room. Those relatives. This picture, does it remind you of when you have family come visit? Maybe they're from far away or maybe they live next door to you. But whenever they come, because they're your family, it makes you want to hug them and laugh and smile, doesn't it? And finally, after a big supper, two or three times around until we all got a turn at the table, there was quiet talk and we were in twos and threes throughout the house. The relatives weren't particular about beds, which was good since there weren't any extras. So a few squeezed in with us and the rest slept on the floor, some with their arms thrown over the closest person or some with an arm across one person and a leg across another. It was different going to sleep with all that new breathing in the house. 
I can remember at Christmas when my cousins slept over and we all slept upstairs in the big attic. And that wasn't where I normally slept, but there was five of us and we all had our sleeping bags and we slept kind of close together like this and we watched for Santa Claus out the skylight and we stayed up late talking and laughing. That reminds me of the way that they're sleeping. The relatives stayed for two weeks they helped us tend the garden and they fixed any broken things they could find. They ate up all our strawberries and melons, then promised we could eat up all their grapes and peaches when we came to Virginia. But none of us thought about Virginia much. We were so busy hugging and eating and breathing together. Looks like they're gonna take a family photograph we used to take a big family photograph at the lake house. We have a lake house in Wisconsin, and every summer when all the relatives would come, we'd sit on a picnic bench just like this with the lake behind us, and we'd have our neighbor come over and take our picture. Finally, after a long time, the relatives loaded up their ice chest and headed back to Virginia at four in the morning. We stood there in our pajamas and waved them off in the dark. We watched the relatives disappear down the road, then we crawled back into our beds that felt too big and too quiet. We fell asleep. I'm wondering why Cynthia Ryland says the beds felt too big and too quiet. Can you think about that? Do you think it's because they got so used to having each other, having everyone so close? and now it feels kind of empty. And the relatives drove on all day long into the night. And while they traveled along, they looked at the strange houses and different mountains and they thought about their dark purple grapes waiting at home in Virginia. But they thought about us too, missing them. And they missed us. And when they were finally home in Virginia, they crawled into their silent, soft beds and dreamed about the next summer and what do you think they're going to do in the next summer maybe they'll switch places and the relatives that they visited will visit them in Virginia boys and girls whenever you read a story whether it's a fiction story or a nonfiction story try to make a connection to it try to think of something that you can pull out of the book that reminds you of something and it's okay while you're reading to stop and think about that because that's only gonna help you understand the text better. All right, I'll see you next time.